potato. Hello, I'm Samantha Jolly. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News, live from Perth. Coming up, Victoria's COVID crisis worsens. 36 suburbs sent into lockdown as two other states keep their borders closed to Victorians. The battle over the borders plunges the AFL into a new fixtures nightmare. Bombshell findings from the inquiry into the Perth City Council that could lead to criminal charges. The desperate search for a man swept into the sea off rocks in our southwest. And it's Australia's lowest ever home loan interest rate. Will it drive competition? First to Victoria, where that state's coronavirus crisis has deepened. It's announced local lockdowns for 36 Melbourne suburbs from midnight tomorrow, ordering people to stay home again as the state struggles to contain COVID-19 outbreaks. 64 new cases were recorded today, making a total of 321 active cases and prompting Queensland and South Australia to delay it would reopening be scary their and borders. frightening in Victoria today. Uh, but um, we have to keep our people safe. That's why we've kept our border arrangement in place. Two new cases were diagnosed in WA overnight. Both of them traced back to overseas and in hotel quarantine. A two-year inquiry has slammed the old City of Perth Council leadership and some of its employees in an explosive report released today. Jeff Parry joins us. And Jeff, the Commissioner of Inquiry has had some devastating things to say about the Lord Mayor, her councillors and some of her staff. Sam, you just don't get reports and findings like this every day of the week. It was a demolition of the Council's leadership between October 2015 and March 2018 when the Lord Mayor Lisa Scafidi and councillors were suspended by the State Government. Today was the last session of the inquiry and it was a jaw-dropping summing up by Commissioner Tony Power of his probe into what went on there, lack of leadership, lack of proper governance, lack of competence, self-interest and possibly criminality. The inquiry has referred over 135 matters, many concerning suspected criminal behaviour in respect of 23 individuals and one organisation including council members and senior members of the administration to 17 different Commonwealth and state authorities. Former Lord Mayor Lisa Scafidi was the only one personally named in the report and came in for some scathing criticism. She too often encouraged division and factionalism. Relationships between council members were frequently cankerous. And Mr Power also identified a council driven by self-interest. The trappings and privileges of high office in the form of dining, clothing and grooming allowances were exploited by some members of the council. They often did so for their own personal benefit at the ratepayers' expense and with little regard for the interests of the community as a whole. Now, Mr Power had so much more to say, Sam, and we'll bring a lot more of that to uh, the viewers in the news at six. Certainly scathing, Jeff. thank you. A desperate search is underway for an international student who was swept into the ocean near Yelling up yesterday evening. Live now to crime reporter Joey Catanzaro at the scene. Joey, do we know who is missing yet? Sam, we've just been told they are searching the sea and the shoreline here for a 23-year-old Singaporean student named Hang Yi Go. He was swept off the rocks by a rogue wave here yesterday evening while sightseeing with friends. Conditions here are nothing short of treacherous and they will be for days to come. The swell was topping six metres when Hang was ripped off the rocks yesterday evening. He's been missing for almost 24 hours and the weather is getting worse with another big front expected to bring more rain and winds of up to 60 kilometres an hour. Police say rescuers are risking their lives in extremely rough conditions. They are still attempting to find Hang but hope is fading fast. The waves here are so savage, Marine Rescue was stood down this afternoon. SES volunteers on the shoreline are wearing life vests because there's a real risk they could be swept out to sea too. Here's what police had to say. We are gravely concerned um, for his welfare. The conditions out there at the moment, um, I wouldn't be overstating by saying that they're quite treacherous. There's safety concerns for all of the, the searches safety concerns for um, any, anyone out there at the moment, safety concerns for the volunteers in the rescue boat, 
um, and the volunteers of the State Emergency Service. Hang is studying at UWA. His family in Singapore is seeking an exemption to travel here. We'll bring you up-to-date details on this desperate search at 6 o'clock. Sam. OK, Joey, thank you. Police say they've uncovered an elaborate case of corruption that could total more than $1 million. Let's bring in crime reporter Emily Baker. And em, it involves Fremantle Ports. Sam, that's right. A former employee is accused of embezzling the money, then fleeing overseas. 54-year-old Gia Como, also known as Jack, and his wife Daniela Marola are wanted over the corruption, which police claim lasted six years. They launched an investigation after the Port Authority raised concerns. Take a listen to what the lead investigator had to say. My office commenced an investigation into the matter and we discovered what we believe to be a sophisticated corrupt setup where Marola has registered Australian based and overseas companies and manipulated the invoice system to have to place orders through local suppliers through to his companies and then had invoices paid through the same route bringing a benefit to himself. The investigation is ongoing and we're still exploring the full extent of the alleged offending but at this stage we believe that he has benefited in excess of $1 million. The couple's children are also embroiled in the alleged crimes accused of property laundering. They faced court today. A warrant is out for Mr and Mrs Marola's arrest and they are believed to be hiding in South Africa. Tonight in 7 News at 6 o'clock, hear what their children had to say outside of court. Sam. Emily, thank you. The family of a teenager killed in Stratham say he was a quirky kid who would do anything for anyone. Tyler Hasty was riding his mountain bike at the intersection of Bustle Highway and Jamin Road when he was hit by a car yesterday. Just got to cherish your moments with all your kids because you just never know when things might happen. So just turn around and just give them a kiss and a hug and tell them you love them all the time. The driver of the car, a woman in her 40s, was not injured. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward. Councillors from the City of Perth will gather in less than an hour to discuss whether or not a raft of major events will go ahead. Reports will be presented at the meeting to discuss whether it's viable for these large-scale events to happen. The big ones include the Christmas Nativity, New Year's Eve and the jewel in WA's Christmas, Crown everyone. Skyworks on Australia Day. Advice from WA's Chief Health Officer will form a large part of the decision on whether or not it's safe for large groups to gather. We'll have an update on these decisions in our bulletin at 6. In a boost to our cyber security capabilities, the government is redirecting $1.3 billion in funding from the Defence Force, spending it to counter the threat posed by hackers online. Tim Lester has more from Canberra. No matter the recession nor the crippling costs of the COVID lockdown, today the government has announced what it calls the nation's largest ever investment in cyber security. $1.35 billion, money reallocated within the defence budget to the Australian Signals Directorate and the government's lead cyber agency based within ASD, the Australian Cyber Security Centre. One third of that money will be to recruit the next generation of cyber intelligence officers. I think most importantly, we're increasing our cyber security workforce. So $470 million of that will go towards employing 500 new cyber security experts from around Australia. The government has failed to deliver an updated cyber security strategy. Even in today's package of announcements, we still do not have that strategy in place. The announcement comes as China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs accuses Australia of carrying out espionage activities against China over a long period, as well claiming Australia has concocted various sensational Chinese spy cases. The spokesman advises Australia to abandon Cold War thinking and ideological prejudice, do less blatant things, say less nonsense. This follows China's tabloid daily, The Global Times, writing about what it calls Australia's intensifying espionage offensive against China. China not named in today's cyber announcement, but clearly it is a big part of the thinking. 
Some employers say they're struggling to find workers, claiming they prefer to stay on the job seeker allowance. The unemployment benefit was doubled to help the one million workers who have lost their jobs during the pandemic. Yes, good afternoon. Job losses peaked during the height of the lockdown in mid-April at 8.8 per cent. But the latest figures from the Australian Bureau of Statistics looking at payroll figures show that 30 per cent of those Australians are now back in paid work. That is encouraging news, although some employers are saying they're finding it difficult to recruit staff who are telling them they're better off on the job seeker payment than taking shifts at work. In a few cases, uh, they, they are finding it uh, more difficult to get some of the casual employees to come back uh, that are on job seeker. The government plans to cancel the COVID supplement of $550 a week to the job seeker payment in September something welfare groups are calling on them not to do. The government needs to have a heart here and also face the facts because everybody out there who's lost their job, they're facing the facts about how they're going to get by. The government is sticking to its well-worn line that the best form of welfare is a job. And this is now the opportunity for people who have lost their jobs and basically need to get back into that workforce to put up their hand and say, I'm ready, willing and able. From tomorrow, the minimum wage will slightly increase, but with uncertainty surrounding how long this pandemic will last and whether or not job seeker will continue, many workers are wondering how they'll make ends meet. A revolutionary new breath test being developed by Australian researchers could tell if someone has coronavirus within minutes. The rapid detection technology aims to help boost the safety of public gatherings and air travel. Good afternoon. A coronavirus test that is as simple and easy as a police roadside breath test. That is the aim of Australian scientists. Researchers from Melbourne and Tasmania working on the device say it would be a non-invasive process. A person blows into a tube similar to a breathalyzer and then a filter is removed and tested for COVID-19. The technology could be used to screen people at airports, sporting events and mass gatherings. The product is is only in the early stages of development though. Right now it's very intrusive, the testing. The breathalyzer will be much more user friendly, fast and accurate. The same team are working on another device to detect the virus on surfaces. The company is basing the concept on technology it already has that is used by government agencies around the world to detect explosives. It's hoped the device could be operational in the next 12 months. Both technologies are aimed at stopping the spread of coronavirus while the world waits for a vaccine. Some Australians will be able to get a fixed rate mortgage starting with a one, with one bank slashing its home loan rate to a record low. Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton has the details. Good afternoon. The battle for home loan business has ratcheted up a notch with the customer-owned Bank of Us unveiling fixed rate loan offers for less than 2%. Borrowers can apply for one, two or three year fixed rate loans at just 1.99%. But there is a catch. It's only available to home buyers in Tasmania. By coming out with what is a market leading fixed interest rate, that gives people an option to lock in their borrowing um, at a rate that they know is fixed and ensures that they've got some confidence about what they, they need to do to repay their home loan. But with competition intensifying and nearly 600 home loan rates slashed in just the past two months, there's speculation that we'll soon see sub 2% offers across Australia. Currently, the average two-year fixed rate is 2.59%, while the average variable rate is 3.43%. As banks grapple with a backlog of work, as they prioritise helping their existing customers hit by COVID and its associated economic fallout, application times for prospective borrowers are increasing. A rush by customers to chase better deals and refinance in recent months means it's now taking some banks weeks to process home loan applications. The AFL is dealing with a fresh fixture crisis this afternoon that's threatening to stop the footy season in its tracks. South Australia's border block is giving league bosses a new scheduling nightmare, which could prove impossible to solve. Hubs are rapidly becoming a reality and for some, weeks away from home will be a stretch. We've got guys with pending babies um, and other challenges or... Um, things going on in their life that we'll have to just manage accordingly. Partners and families are paramount. Some Tigers may stay behind. The most important thing is that our partners feel supported and, and have the required 
help uh, that's that's going to be needed with players and, and coaches and staff being away for a period of time. So do you feel there'd be a chance perhaps one or two players would go? Yeah, I think, I think that would be a genuine chance, yeah. Border exemptions in Queensland and now South Australia have caused fixture chaos. Geelong and Collingwood are WA bound. Seven News understands the Magpies preparing to stay at the exclusive Joondaloop Resort outside of Perth. The league flagging it's set to send more Victorian clubs interstate. We'll now look at uh, sort of round six and seven and eight as to how we um, get the Victorian teams, uh, much like we've done at WA, um, into Queensland, into New South Wales. Geelong coach Chris Scott, philosophical about life on the road. It would be much better for us to have a bit of short-term pain but be able to continue in my position um, rather than being stuck at home in quarantine and um, without a salary. That would be a bigger price to pay, I would have thought. Mark Stevens, 7 News. Up next, a 7 News correspondent gives evidence at an inquiry into America's violent Black Lives Matter protests. Plus, the simple request that had this shopper in the US all fired up. And based on a true story, did Hollywood predict our global crisis? In a season of upheavals... Inside AFL. There's nothing that's normal at the moment. The only team with inside access... Looks like I'll be playing pretty soon. ...is on 7 News. Young Matty Rao made a massive impact in a short period of time, as has his high panting. If he pulls those pants up any higher, there'll be no chance of them getting anyone under the father's <laughs> rule. That's rich coming from you two. This was the promo from two years back. Massive show coming up. That's The Front Bar. Be later on tonight. <laughs> the Front Bar, Wednesday on 7. As credit to you, here's up to $120 credit from us. Add any selected month-to-month -month mobile plan with Vodafone and get the credit you deserve over 12 months. Find out more at vodafone.com.au. Ready? Hi. Look at how great you look. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I've been on a diet my entire life. I even cut out bread and pasta for a day. And then I tried Noom. I feel like anyone could use Noom. It's an easy to stick to program that actually changed my habits. It changed the way I look at food. They say it's based on a cognitive behavioral approach. I just say it works. It just clicked. It worked. It worked with Noom. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. For the mid-afternoon naps. For the midnight marathons. For bringing the family together. For a chance to escape from the world. For the good times the other times. For the years of support. Danks Furniture. The comfort of home. Neurofensive Ants liquid capsules have a thin seam which enables fast release into the body. To sort pain out fast, use Neurofensive Ants liquid capsules. Unleash the speed of liquid. Shut up and take my money. Never like a party in the summertime. Never like seeing you, baby, looking so fine. Find the perfect fit with up to 60% off a huge range of quality footwear at Paul Carroll. Shop our international collection now. Free shipping Australia-wide on orders over $50. Shop now. paulcarroll.com.au We're ready to get back out there again. As we do, it's up to all of us to stay COVID safe. Anytime you leave your house, wash your hands regularly. Keep physical distance where you can. Have the COVID Safe app on your phone. And importantly, if you're feeling sick, you need to stay at home and get tested. Together, we can reduce the risk of a second wave. Stay COVID free and do the three. Authorised by the Chief Medical Officer, Canberra. 2020, finally some good news. This end of financial year, Step 1's got you covered. 4-pack, 20% off. 7-pack, 25% off. And this big fella, get a 15-pack for 30% off. Get them online at step1.life. Be quick.
Does high-end fine art, watches, jewelry, or extremely rare memorabilia interest you? Lloyd's Auctions Multi-Million Dollar Fine Art and Luxury Event is online now, and everything starts at $1. Over 100 amazing one-of-a-kind pieces, featuring 17th century artwork, original art by Arthur Boyd, Clifford Possum, and many more iconic Australian artists, extremely rare banknotes, 3,000-year-old pottery, 10-carat diamond, 24-carat green emerald pendant, high-end watches, and more, all starting at $1. Bid now at Lloyd's Auctions or call 24-7. You're watching 7's 4pm news live from Perth. Showers increasing this afternoon into tonight. Right now in the city, it's 19 degrees. The forecast is coming up soon. 7 News correspondent Amelia Brace has given evidence before US Congress investigating the actions of police during Black Lives Matter protests. Brace described the moment she and cameraman Tim Myers were attacked by police just a few blocks from the White House. Covering protests does carry unavoidable risks, but the media's role is essential. We don't just have a right to be there, we have an obligation. Amelia Brace was among several witnesses called to testify. As America's coronavirus crisis worsens, a deep divide is emerging over the wearing of face masks. As US correspondent Paul Kadak reports, although widely accepted across the globe, the topic has been the cause of violence in the US. Good afternoon. As the number of COVID cases is surging here in the United States, it seems the divide over wearing masks is only deepening. In Texas, here's how a shopper responded after being asked to wear a mask. I don't give a about oh with calls today for Donald Trump to sign an order requiring masks to be worn in public and to set an example as states now suffering a COVID spike urge people to wear them. Let the president have the same sense and do that as an executive order. And then let the president lead by example and let the president put a mask on it. The White House press secretary defending his rights not to. It's his choice to wear a mask. It's the personal choice of any individual as to whether to wear a mask or not. He encourages people to make whatever decision is best for their safety. As some argue being forced to wear a mask is a blow against their freedom, others that they can't wear one because of medical issues, leading to confrontations like this in Los Angeles. <laughs> All of this certainly not helping health experts who are just trying to get the message across that wearing a mask does help stop the spread of COVID. As more than 30 states now see cases on the rise, 14 states now pausing or rolling back reopenings. Russia has emphatically denied claims it's been offering bounties to Taliban forces in exchange for killing US and coalition troops in Afghanistan. I don't think that this situation is, is possible ever. So, so this is this is really ridiculous. Maybe I, I, I can sound a little bit rude, but uh, but this is a 100% bull. The New York Times claims Mr. Trump was handed a written briefing on the issue in February. The president claims intelligence agencies didn't mention anything to him because he says they didn't think the information was credible. Meantime, Iran has issued a warrant for the arrest of Mr Trump. The commander-in-chief is wanted for the killing of Iran's top military general. Qassam Soleimani was killed in a drone strike in Iraq in January. The US has dismissed the move as a political stunt. Two officers accused of aiding and abetting the murder of George Floyd had nothing to say after appearing in court. Lawyers for Thomas Lane and Alexander King were urged to limit pre-trial publicity or face the case being moved. This is just absolutely insane that we all are gathered here to talk about my nephew getting murdered by a damn madman in the middle of the street. For what reason? Because of the colour of his skin. Bring him over. The trial is set down to begin next March. It seems movie makers may need to adjust how they portray pandemics now that we're living through one. An Australian student has found while there have been plenty of movies about apocalyptic plagues, the worldwide spread of an infectious disease hasn't gone the way Hollywood predicted. As the pandemic took hold, many were quick to point out that it was like something from a movie. But an Adelaide High School student has found some pretty stark differences between how we've dealt with coronavirus and how we deal with an onslaught of zombies. 
was just kind of watching some zombie films and I thought, well, the spread in here seems kind of unrealistic. I thought I may as well give it a little bit of a comparison. 16-year-old Aaron McLean used the data in films to see how outbreaks were dealt with. In real life, we put down quarantines, border lockdowns, but almost none of that ever happened in films. He found movies, saw the military fly in with guns blazing. And often cures weren't looked for until millions had become infected. There are a lot of people out there who will say, I'm the expert in this now, I've, I've been through it and I think Holly will definitely have to uh, adapt to that. The project, part of Year 11 studies at the Australian Science and Mathematics School at Flinders Uni, looking at life lessons through an analytical lens. And given that the world is in this turmoil at the moment, they've got lots of questions around the pandemic and we really wanted to give them a chance to actually delve really deeply into that. Aaron says while the films took some artistic licence, that's probably for the best. It's hard to imagine a film about the real COVID response being just as entertaining. Coming up, we'll hear from the Victorian Premier on that state's worsening coronavirus crisis. Also six months in, the Global Health Authority warning against complacency in the fight against coronavirus. And the worrying data and what it tells us about warming in Antarctica. something I've never done before. Turn restaurants around in 24 hours. New Ramsey's 24 hours to hell and back. Tonight on 7. Pay less every day at The Good Guys. This higher washer only $4.95. $200 off this Dyson vacuum. This Bosch dishwasher only $6.91. And 15% off Microsoft Surface Pro 7 Pro X and Laptop 3. Plus loads more only at The Good Guys. If you have a serious ongoing condition like osteoporosis, don't put your health on hold. Medical authorities are urging you to keep in contact with your GP and stay on your medications. Call your doctor today to stay treated and stay safe. Treat yourself to a smooth, delicious barista-made McCafe coffee and we could treat you to a free coffee every day for a year. Drive through and buy any McCafe drink and go in the running to be your local McCafe winner. When the road calls, here's the very best way to answer. The BMW X3 S Drive 20i from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. You wash loads, but do you ever wash your washing machine? Every load leaves behind grime and ugh, what's that smell? Pino Clean Washing Machine Cleaner removes 99.9% .9 of germs, leaving it clean and fresh for longer. It's not clean unless it's Pino Clean. For pain relief, choose Maxagesic from your local Terry White Chem Mart. Maxagesic is a unique patented combination of paracetamol and ibuprofen that provides fast and effective double action relief from a wide range of pain. Right now at Terry White Chem Mart, Maxagesic paracetamol plus ibuprofen 12 tablets are just $3.99. Maxagesic's powerful pain relief and your local Terry White Chem Mart. That's real chemistry. As credit to you, here's up to $120 credit from us. Add any selected month-to-month -month mobile plan with Vodafone and get the credit you deserve over 12 months. Find out more at vodafone.com.au. Ready? How did insurance get to be so painful? One policy for your house, one policy for your car, one for your pet, one for your boat, and so on. Loads of different premiums to pay throughout the year with prices to compare, details to update. What? A headache. If that's how you feel about insurance, you need a hug. Hug is the insurance policy that makes life simple and easy. It brings your different insurance needs together into one single policy. That means just one premium to pay each year. Just one person to call to get a claim processed quickly without any fuss. And because we've made it so easy, Hug can save you 20% on comparable covers. Every Hug comes with a concierge to help you make the switch. And we've managed to reduce the small print in the PDS. So, unwind and relax. Just fill out the application and your insurance miseries will be a thing of the past. Have a hug.
One policy, one premium, one very big sigh of relief. As we reported earlier, Victoria's coronavirus crisis has deepened with the state reimposing stage three lockdown for more than 30 suburbs from midnight tomorrow. The measures will be in place for at least another four weeks after the state recorded 64 new coronavirus cases in the past 24 hours. Premier Daniel Andrews says hundreds of people have refused to get tested. Because of the unacceptably high rates of community transmission and the unacceptably high rates of new cases, even those where we can attribute their source. Uh, it is incredibly important that we take some next steps to deal with this challenge right now. The situation in Victoria has seen South Australia scrap its planned July 20 border opening date with Victoria, throwing everything, including the AFL season, into chaos. The World Health Organisation is warning that globally the worst is yet to come for the COVID-19 pandemic. While many authorities have, countries have been able to control it, in the US the numbers are rising again. And in Brazil and India, both are seeing infections rise with no sign of the curve flattening. This is the world's largest COVID medical facility. The Sardar Patel Hospital in South Delhi spans an area equivalent to 20 football pitches. It's 10 times bigger than any COVID facility in China. It's just become operational. The staff receive a final briefing before the doors are opened and the first patients begin to arrive. The full strength is almost 10,000. So the deputy commissioner has told it will be ready within the next four or five days. As on today, we can admit 2,000 immediately. It's just one sign how countries like India, which has over half a million recorded cases of corona so far, is preparing for what it believes could be a far quicker rise in the virus's spread. Six months on from when it heard of the first case, today the World Health Organization gave a sobering warning, saying the worst was yet to come and that the virus is not close to being over. Having just passed the grim milestone of half a million deaths, no part of humanity and no region is immune or safe. And Latin America is now the new front line in the global battle against coronavirus, with Brazil at the epicenter of a frightening rise in new cases. Sao Paulo's densely packed favelas is a perfect setting for the easy and rapid transmission of coronavirus. Gilson Rodriguez, a community leader of Paraisópolis favela, says that children, if contaminated, are one of the highest transmitters of COVID. And the only way to prevent that is by wearing masks. So we are conducting a task force to make masks for children and are distributing it to them. One of the most vulnerable parts of the world is sub-Saharan Africa. This is a medical war dealing with coronavirus in the Somali capital Mogadishu. And it's a reminder of how fragile and under-resourced health systems in Africa are. The spread of corona is on the rise in Africa too. And the real fear is that a time will come when the continent's health systems will simply not be able to cope anymore. The capacity of the health system in most of our countries would not be able to cope with a huge increase in people needing uh, treatment and care, particularly beyond the capital. So if you go into the hinterland, into the districts and provinces in countries, the capacity of our health systems is very, um, very inadequate. Although South Africa is the continent's most advanced economy, it's been hit the hardest by coronavirus, accounting for 25% of all cases in Africa. The lockdown has meant that the informal markets and jobs that sustained millions has disappeared, leading many to go hungry. The South Pole, considered the coldest and most remote place on Earth, is warming three times faster than the rest of the globe. Data gathered over the past 30 years has found that the average surface temperature has been rising steadily since 1989. Researchers saying human activity is likely the cause. The Arctic is having a record-breaking heat wave, 38 degrees registered in some parts of northern Russia. The Spanish capital Madrid is also sweltering through a heat wave. Temperatures in the city have reached 39 degrees and there's no sign of letting up. Dealing with the heat has been made more difficult as face masks are compulsory in Madrid. The state government has now tagged 115 great white sharks swimming off our coast. Noel Brunning joins us from the GWN7 News Desk with the details. The new total is double the number of tagged sharks we had just three years ago and six of them were tagged in recent weeks when wildlife officers caught them close to a whale carcass south of Augusta. 
The federal parliament has set up a new committee to look at the problem of feral cats. It includes member for O'Connor Rick Wilson, who says more research is needed to find better ways to control them. And Rex Airlines has announced it's going to almost double its number of flights in WA. There'll now be eight weekly services from Perth to Albany and Esperance and five flights a week to Carnarvon and Monkey Mire. The collapse of George Columbaris' restaurant empire has cost taxpayers more than $1 million. The company didn't have enough money to cover worker entitlements, so they were bailed out by a federal government safety net. The former celebrity chef's chain closed in the wake of a $7 million underpayment scandal. Dozens of employees on temporary visas are still waiting for super and redundancy payments. Still to come, we've got dramatic dash cam vision of a motorway pile-up. Plus, the horse that never gave up, rising from the ashes, what it achieved at the weekend. And a rare floral experience, the flower that blooms only one night a year. He's got, He's it. got it. He's got He's it. Got Made it. a big move. This will be the biggest moment. Right, this sounds big. Better put my big voice on. A big one. Thursday, Blues and Saints step up to the big stage. Oh, that's big, big. Friday, you're in for a big one as Collingwood take on Essendon. From Thursday night, go to the footy on 7 mate. That's a bra that your body's supposed to fit. This is a bra that fits perfectly to your body. Introducing Sarah Mia, a bra so supporting and flattering, yet so comfortable, you won't even know you're wearing a bra. The secret is Sarah Mia's double conforming lifting straps. The lace strap is a lifting wrap, just criss and cross to be cradled in comfort and youthfully lifted. Take a look at how Sarah Mia fits all shapes and supports all sizes, all without underwire. Hayley has a naturally smaller chest and just wanted a little more shape. She got the look she was going for on the very first try. And this is Roxanne. She thought about getting a lift, but really didn't want the surgery. She tried the bra and is beyond thrilled with not only the lift, but the youthful look it gives her. And lastly, Whitney. Whitney has a very large chest, which has caused her back strain when not supported. When she tried on the bra, it not only gives her the support she needs, but the shape she wants. This is the first bra that's been comfortable, soft, and still supportive. I look great, I feel comfortable. Confidence is even more where like, I kind of stand up more with my posture. And the best part is, is that you don't feel it and you can't tell that you're wearing it. Even though I have two different size boobs, the straps that fasten in the front, the fact that they contour to who you are and how your boobs are, that is just amazing to me. Call Global Shop Direct or go online to order Sarah Mia in your choice of black, white or nude for the low price on your screen. Want even more value? Upgrade your order and save with our Value 3 pack. You'll get one black, one white and one nude bra and save an amazing $70. If Sarah Mia isn't the most comfortable soft bra you've ever worn, just send it back within 30 days for a full refund of the product price. Finally, a bra that fits perfectly to your body. Order Sarah Mia today. Rarely seen, but always there for us. Our Australian donors have continually provided vital support. Now more than ever, we thank you for your mercy and compassion toward the forgotten poor in Africa. Mercy Ships. Your drinking could contribute to a weaker immune system. To stay healthy and well, it's important to drink at low risk levels. Try alcohol-free days, low alcohol alternatives, and avoid stocking up. Reduce your drinking to reduce your risk. Police from the Traffic and Highway Patrol in New South Wales have released dramatic dash cam video of a vehicle pile-up on a motorway yesterday. In the vision, a truck driver can be seen coming to a stop when another truck slams into his rear, causing a domino effect. A police officer who was conducting a traffic stop was among six people injured in the crash. Former television presenter Ryan Phelan has pleaded not guilty to assaulting his partner at the Sydney home they shared earlier this month. The 45-year-old faced court this morning. His lawyer said the allegations are emphatically denied. False allegations of domestic violence are extremely serious. They result in the totally unacceptable victimisation of the accused person. 
The matter will return to court in August. One of America's most prolific serial killers has admitted a string of shocking crimes that terrorised California during the 1970s and 80s. Joseph D'Angelo, known as the Golden State Killer, has pleaded guilty to multiple charges of murder and rape after a deal with prosecutors that will see him spared the death penalty. And we warn some of the details in this story are disturbing. Joseph James D'Angelo lived for so long as a free man but today he was brought before a specially arranged, socially distanced court hearing and in front of the relatives of his many victims, he admitted to being a kidnapper, a rapist and a murderer. Murder in the first degree, how do you plead? It opened the back door and entered the bedroom of a 32 In 1970s California, D'Angelo's crimes were the stuff of nightmares. He was a police officer who, late at night, would dress all in black, put on a ski mask and break into his victims' homes. He tied them up and raped them. Sometimes he let them live, other times he beat them to death. His attacks caused panic throughout the state. There were runs on the sale of guns, door locks and guard dogs. The scope of Joseph D'Angelo's crime spree is simply staggering, encompassing 13 known murders and almost 50 rapes between 1975 and 1986. His monikers reflect the sweeping geographical impact of his crimes. The Visalia Ransacker, the East Area Rapist, the original Night Stalker and the Golden State Killer. Each time he escaped, slipping away silently into the night, leaving communities terrified for years. When the law finally caught up with D'Angelo, he was living out his golden years in the suburbs where he used to kill people. But investigators still had his DNA from one of the crime scenes. They matched it to some of D'Angelo's distant relatives who had used a genealogy website to find out about their family background. One branch of that family tree led detectives straight to the Golden State Killer. Prene, murder in the first degree. Is that charge, sir? How do you plead? Guilty. D'Angelo entered his guilty pleas as part of a deal with prosecutors in which he is spared the death penalty. Why he did what he did can only be guessed at, but having got away with murder for decades, what's left of his life will be spent in jail. Now to an amazing sporting comeback. A horse feared dead in the devastating summer bushfires in the Adelaide Hills has had a fairy tale return to racing. After spending six months away from the track, Turf Tapper's return to racing couldn't have gone any better. But it's Turf Tapper with Picayune. Picayune won't go away, but Turf Tapper has its measure just. Turf Tapper... The six-year-old gelding bravely hanging on to win at Bordertown on Sunday, his first race since December. It was a moment his owners feared may never come. The horse left so traumatised from the Cudley Creek blaze, there were no guarantees he'd ever race again. He was being kept at owner and former trainer John Glatz's Hills property when the fire tore through. John, an SA racing identity, was badly burnt defending his home that was destroyed along with much of his land. Incredibly, Turf Tapper broke through a paddock gate and ran to safety. Since then, he's been in the hands of Shane and Chelsea Cahill at their Ashbourne property. You know, to see him back in the winner's stall and, and his first run back from a spell and through that ordeal, was, it was awesome. The Cahills say there's still a lot of improvement to come from Turf Tapper. They hope he can continue his winning ways when he returns to the racetrack in the coming weeks. Sightseers have gathered in Japan for a rather rare experience. They're here to see this flower. It's nicknamed the Queen of the Night and it only blooms one night per year. It's actually part of the cactus family and usually blooms for just a few hours after sunset with its petals wilting by the morning. But the staff at the gardens where it's on display have managed to trick Mother Nature. They've essentially given the flower jet lag by keeping it in a dark room for days. So its annual bloom took place during the day. The young man making a name for himself at the Dockers. Details coming up in sport.
He's the master of mischief. I'm just gonna lie. Tonight, one little whisper. Keep this between us. We'll start a war. This is gonna be one of the biggest bombs I'm gonna drop, and it's gonna land perfectly. It'll turn friend against friend. You've thrown three people in front of the bus. I don't trust you as far as I could throw you. And it might even tear a romance apart. I don't know who to believe. New Big Brother, tonight, 7.30 on 7. Acorn stair lifts are the most cost-effective way to retain your independence. And Acorn's fast-track installation means minimal disruption and no need for custom rails. Call for a free on-site consultation or visit acornstairlifts.com.au. Well, so far, 2020's been a challenge. So this year, we've introduced some new options for Dry July. We're calling it Dry-ish July. To help raise funds for cancer patients, you can be a fortnight Frankie, a three-week Wendell, or a fully dry die. Old school. Go as dry as you're willing to try to help people affected by cancer. Sign up today at dryjuly.com. Tonight, I'll be eating a chicken kebab with extra hot sauce. For training purposes, you cannot beat a bowl cut. What have you done? Thanks. People are going to think we're sisters. If your hearing isn't what it used to be, Hear and Spin can support you with ear testing and hearing improvement solutions at our local independent clinic. Monkey. Oh, monkey. Get back into the conversation. Contact Hear and Spin to book an appointment. Save up to $60,000 with our stimulus package. Secure your brand new display home at Helena Valley Lifestyle Village with just a $500 deposit. Book a home inspection at helenavalleylifestyle.com.au or call today. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi, Mum. Mars, enough chocolate to deal with anything. Oh, it's very good. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. $110,000. Another massive winner. Could you be next? Only on... You're watching Seven's Afternoon News. Basil joins us now. And, Baz, the Dockers have a new young star. They have, Sam. Yes, his name is Hayden Young, and he's set to be nominated as one of the game's rising stars later this year. The 19-year-old starred for Fremantle in their narrow loss to the Suns, and he's renowned for his deadly left foot. That's twice he's done that in the last minute. Yeah, he's got a great year. Um, the leg, and, um, yeah, we want to give it to him as much as we can. Um, yeah, really impressed with the way he's been going around his footy and, um, yeah, especially on the weekend, he's courageous and, yeah, an exciting player. And in our news tonight at six, I will speak with Fremantle coach Justin Longmuir about his star draftee and also full captain Frio this weekend after the hamstring injury to Nat Fife. Zimbabwe's one-day tour of Australia has been postponed due to the COVID-19 crisis. The Zimbabweans were supposed to visit for three one-dayers in August. A decision on the October T20 World Cup is set to be made by the ICC next month. It's a little bit up in the air, to be honest, mate. I think just with the, how quick everything's changing um, in Australia. All-rounder Ben Stokes says he's ready to captain England if Joe Root misses the first test against the West Indies. Getting the opportunity to, to captain um, England is a huge honour, and even if it's only the once... The England and West Indies teams are planning a joint Black Lives Matter demonstration. Formula One's leading manufacturer, Mercedes, has thrown its support behind the Black Lives Matter movement. The team has changed the colour of their race cars from silver to black for the 2020 season. World champion Lewis Hamilton has been an outspoken critic of racism in the sport and across the globe. The season starts in Austria on Sunday. 
Now, we'd normally be gearing up for day two at Wimbledon right now, but as we know, this is a sporting year like no other. The Duchess of Cambridge has narrated a special video reminding fans that once the health crisis ends, more magical moments will be made at the All England Club. But we will bide our time until we sit on the edge of our seats again oh. and celebrate again. Oh, that is remarkable. A oh, nice voice, so we'll get her into doing a news package. Wimbledon was last cancelled back in 1945. Let's get back to some footy news now. And Richmond will be without key defender David Asprey for up to five weeks with the dual premiership player having knee surgery this afternoon. It comes as skipper Trent Cotchen admits a lack of crowd noise could be contributing to the Tigers' struggles. As his teammates hit the track, David Asprey was preparing to go under the knife. He landed awkwardly, suffering cartilage damage behind his kneecap in their loss to the Saints. Probably miss around four to five weeks and really... Once he's back, we've just got to get that knee strong again. Winless after the restart, Trent Cochin believes the absence of the Tiger Army is affecting them. In reality, to a lot of different clubs, we aren't quite used to having no, no noise at a stadium. And I don't think that's an excuse or uh, a reason as to why we're not performing quite to the level. But no, all these things add up. Their opponents, the Demons, aren't using the season's challenges to justify their form. That's not a reason for the poor football um, that's been on display and, and certainly ours, some basics that we've just been stuffing up. And May had to explain himself to Michael Hibbert's wife after their agonising loss to the Cats. His wife said, was Maisie yelling at you after the game? But I was actually having just a conversation with him. My animations with my face and that looks like I'm angry, but I'm actually just like trying to talk. Not many 18-year-olds playing their fifth game cause coaches headaches, but not many average 22 touches, almost two goals a game, and sit outright third to win the Brownlow like Matt Rowell. I suspect it'll be closer to the hard tag end of the spectrum. I don't think we'll be completely focused on him, but he should expect some attention. Joel Selwood plays his 300th against the Suns, Ablett his 350th. Speaking of the great man, there he is. If I were you, I'd swing your camera around to him, not me. But <laughs> Sean Sowby, 7 News. <laughs> and indeed they did. I'm going to speak to Justin Longmuir tonight at 6. Sam, I'll see you then. See you then. Thanks, Baz. We have more rain on the way tonight, but I'll tell you when the sunshine is back right after the break. This is where WA starts the day. From this morning, COVID-19 restrictions are being relaxed. If it's breaking in Perth... Live now to the crime scene. You'll see it on Sunrise. Royal Perth Hospital. Sunrise is Perth News. Very good news to start our Wednesday. Sunrise, the best way to start your day in WA. Peter Falconio was shot by a gunman who attempted to abduct his girlfriend, Joanne Lees. They found the killer. He was the murderer. Or did they? The murder you thought was solved. 34 inconsistencies. It's what you don't know that will shock the world. No one doubts me. I couldn't believe this had never seen the light of day. We reopen the case. Without a body and without a motive, you've lost two essential parts to a murder. Did they get the right man? The event that will make world headlines. There is so much more to this story than people have ever imagined. Murder in the Outback, this July on 7. Wish you had internet that didn't let you down, that doesn't leave you hanging, and won't have you missing any of the action? Get Vodafone NBN with 4G backup. Plans start from just $55 a month. And with free express delivery, connect instantly once you receive it. Buy online today at vodafone.com.au. Ready? Uh, about two, three weeks into Noom, I saw a commercial on TV. I go, Noom should have me on the commercial because I eat candy and ice cream all day. Noom is made for the real world. I'm a third generation uh, candy maker. It's so sustainable and I don't have to deprive myself. It corrected all of the bad habits that I had fallen into. From a both physical and mental standpoint, he's just healthier. I taste candy every day for a living. And if I can lose weight on Noom, so can you. Visit Noom.com and change your life for good. Hanging out for Spudshed's weekly specials? Then head to spudshed.com.au for all our crazy cheap specials. And start saving a spud loan. At Spudshed, we grow it, we sell it, you save. Entertain your family and make over your backyard with an Aquatechnics Fool. Visit our website for our award-winning range including plunge pools, sleek lap designs and the amazing 11-metre model. Get an online quote or visit our display centres today. 
Fun is at tax time. You can upgrade your equipment, you can get organised for the new year. You can also top up your cleaning supplies, your safety gear. Now's a great time to get organised before June 30. Five shelf storage unit, only $142. Bosch four piece combo kit, $699. Multi purpose aluminium ladder, $295. Bluetooth earmuffs, just $99.90. Where you find a competitor's lower price on the same stocked item will beat it by 10%. Shop at Bunnings wherever you are, whenever you want. How do they pull off? Oh, well <laughs> One of the greatest wins in chase history. I can afford to live again. <laughs> You'll have to see this to believe it. Oh, my God! <laughs> you the chase. Weekdays at 5 on 7. This weather report proudly brought to you by Australian Red Cross. Good afternoon, it's Savannah here with a check of your roads. Your freeways are rather full with northbound at seeing brake lights Manning Road up to Canning Highway, Mouth Bay Road into the city, then Arundel Road to Reed Highway. On that southbound run, brake lights Oshring Road, city to Mill Point Road and it's patchy from Berrigan Drive to Rowley Road. RAC Insurance have been awarded CanStar's 2020 winner for WA's most satisfied home insurance customers. Get a quote at rac.com.au. More traffic tomorrow. Now, Fuel Watch. Perth's petrol prices brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News. Checking the weather now, showers have picked up this afternoon and we had a top of almost 20 degrees this afternoon. Looking at the national forecast, a sunny day for Melbourne tomorrow, wet and windy in Adelaide. Back to Perth, showers tomorrow, mostly in the morning, 18 and sunny on Thursday. The sunshine continuing into Friday and Saturday, 20 for Friday, 23 for our Saturday and the showers will return on Sunday and hang around for Monday, while Tuesday is looking cloudy with a top of 19. And I'll see you with Rick, Sue and Baz for 7 News at 6. Stay with us for The Chase Australia. Tell me a bit about yourself. Ah, uh, look, just a farmer out in the red dirt. It's just very lonely out here, and I'm looking for someone to share these flies with. I think I'm a pretty good bloke. I don't know why I'm single. I don't know why. I'm ready, I'm no turning back. Ready, I'm ready. Hopefully, at the end of the day, I find a wife. So you're pretty serious. Build a family, wife, children, the works. Is that yeah. what you're after? Might as well get into it, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> Boy. Never expected to have feelings for someone so quickly. My heart has pounded faster and harder than it ever has in my life. Get me a little bit of romantic on. And these are happy tears. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I definitely am starting to fall for Harry. Oh, I thought I had it all figured out, but not now. Just gets harder and harder. Hey. I'm in a bloody pickle, mate. Will Farmer Harry find the love of his life? I think true love does exist. Never know. She might be the one. Real love is back. New Farmer Once a Wife, this July on 7. These four strangers must work as a team to win thousands of dollars, but standing in their way is one of the sharpest minds in Australia. The Chaser. The chase is on. <laughs> Welcome to The Chase Australia. It's delightful to have your company, as always. And look, ABCD right back.